What do you mean do something nice and don't tell anyone about it? How am I going to make sure everyone on social media knows how good of a person I am? Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live your life on purpose. Today, I wanna to talk about the elusive construct of altruism. I hate to admit it, but I've always struggled with the concept of altruism. Doing good for goodness sake and without the need for something in return, recognition, celebration. I mean, it sounds lovely. In the broader sense, it's about being content or confident enough in ourselves to know that we no longer need or are pressured by others' assessment of us. Our character, our list of deeds to feel worthy and whole is completely independent of anybody else. But this seemed to be a gift that wasn't bestowed on me. I mean, I enjoy doing nice things for others, but I always felt this desire to be celebrated for it, finding myself disappointed when things that I would do would go unnoticed. The problem is then the desire to be recognized created a sense of shame in me. Why do I care so much if people know? What is it that drives me to want people to know my values and goodness? And why do I assume it's only in my behaviors that this comes through? I reflected on this a lot, especially as a means of addressing the shame I felt about it, and it boiled down to two main issues. An insecure attachment, meaning as a child, I struggled with the confidence that people would be there for me consistently, and the expansion of the social media empire. So first, let's talk about an insecure attachment and intermittent reinforcement. I grew up, like most kids, wanting to be seen and celebrated. You want to have value and you want people, especially adults, to be proud of you. Don't get me wrong, I had it. It was just intermittent. Intermittent reinforcement means that the same behavior or action isn't met with the same or consistent response. The same action might be met with a variety of different responses, depending on the mood or the state of the respondent. In the case of parents and caregivers, this can have incredibly detrimental effects as it conditions a hypervigilant response in the brain to try and anticipate if and when more negative outcomes could happen and also creates a sense of addiction to try to get that next hit of approval or acknowledgement. By the time I was 18, I had moved nine times, each move requiring me to connect with and assimilate into a new group of peers, teachers, and other adults in my life. There was this constant need to prove my worth, and each time, there was this seemingly real and pervasive possibility of not fitting in. I just wanted to be worthy, and I struggled to believe that I would ever be enough if I didn't do enough for everyone else. I became so anxious by this notion of transient worthiness that everything I did, I would practically scream, look how good I am, and it worked. For a while. Praise gave me a sense of value. And I think in this, the concept of true altruism then became a fallacy. I just couldn't chance not being identified as the one who did something or took care of something. I had to consider how my actions would impact my ability to belong and to be a part of the group. So let's consider this idea for you. How did you grow up understanding altruism? Did it seem real or feasible? What shame and judgment have you held about yourself for not being able to be genuinely selfless all the time? How secure were and are you in your sense of worthiness and belonging in the world? What experiences, people, or memories contribute to this? And can you think of a time when you did something good for someone else and you didn't invite or care about the recognition or praise that accompanied it? How did that feel? Now let's take it a little bit deeper. When you hold the door open for someone and they don't say thank you, what's your immediate reaction? For me, I used to have this righteous anger, and I was annoyed. I stopped and did this nice thing, and you don't even acknowledge it? What does that tell me? That holding the door open wasn't about doing something kind. It was about doing something with an expectation in return that, when left unmet, made me judge the other person and myself. Examples like this are so important because they show you how automatic it is to feel slighted without recognition. As such, it isn't something to judge yourself for, just something to notice and begin to get more curious about. 
Okay, let's layer in part two, social media. So in a world where we're already plagued by the constant fear of being unworthy or devoid of connection, social media upped the ante. What we do, the number of likes and friends we have, our followers, all of this became social capital that's exchanged for value, love, and connection. It rewires our brain to think more about what we do to be of value, chasing some unrealistic idea of perfection and performance to be enough. We've hardwired in our brains a conditioned response system. We check, refresh, check, and then check again to see how many likes a post gets. How many comments we get or shares we have somehow starts to define whether or not what we shared, did, or do, or say is of value. This has even affected the conferences I can submit proposals for, denying people an opportunity to share their voice because they don't have enough followers. I know, ridiculous. And yet we all keep buying into it. The root? Anxiety, fear, and shame lead to false attempts to connect and market ourselves as worthy. Look what I can do for you or see how great I am. It's an unintentional outcome of the growth of the social media world that we live in, a world where kindness is too often motivated by self-promotion and celebration rather than the desire to do good without acknowledgement. So let's think about this for you. How do you feel social media has impacted your life, particularly how much of your life you share and how you share it? Thinking about what you post, are you trying to cultivate a specific image of yourself? Do you, compo- do you post the complete picture? Do you only post pictures of positive, happy, or remarkable moments? Do you post every photo you took trying to get to that perfect shot or just the one shot edited and posed? How do you think this feeds into the concepts posed above? So let's bring this all together and think about where we want to go. The reality is that the drive to be seen and celebrated is never going anywhere. We all feel that pull and engaging with it does nothing but keep us stuck in the chase. So what would it look like to do something really nice for someone and not get recognized for it? What if you bought somebody coffee in the drive-thru or you made an anonymous donation or you go clean up your neighborhood without anybody knowing? How might your experiences feel different, positive, negative, or neutral if you did this without recognition? And be honest with yourself both about what you might gain and what you fear you would lose. So now let's put this into action. I want you to think about one thing you can do in the next week to add meaning, value, or kindness to someone's life without telling anyone or being recognized for it. Write it down someplace just for you. And once you've done it, I want you to come back and ask yourself what it felt like. Did you feel yourself struggling with the urge to share with someone? Or were you able to walk away and know you did something positive in the world and that alone is enough? What's one small change that you can then make on social media to call out, disconnect from, or mitigate the perpetuation of perfection and performance? Altruism is one form of authentic living. It's about being able to make choices in line with your values without a focus on how are or not seen or assessed by others they are. It'll take work, constant and repeated reframing. And that's part of the process of learning to write your own story. So if you like what you're hearing, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, share this video with someone else you think needs to hear it. Thank you so much for being here with me today, to be willing to hold space for how hard this process is, and to be a part of the collective, changing our focus away from the direction of shame. Remember, you have the right to author your own story. So let's go get that pen back. See you next time.